G'day, this is Jim. Today I'm going to show you how to turn this silver side into biltong. Now silver side is the traditional meat or cut used to make biltong, but you can use a range of other meats as well. You can see this is quite a large size, which is good. Uh, I was able to secure this from my local butcher. And usually when I go to get silver side, it's either corn silver side or it's cut in small pieces at the grocery store. So again, going to a local butcher is going to be your best shot to get the best piece of meat possible for this recipe. I was able to specify not only the weight, but the fact that I wanted to leave it in nice long strips. So when this biltong is cut, we're going to cut it into about one inch thick slices, nice and long and hang it into the biltong box. Now, if you've come from watching my biltong box video, welcome. If you haven't seen that already though, there's a link in the description below where I actually make a biltong box from scratch. So if you haven't seen that already, please go and check that out. For now though, I'm gonna trim off the fat and I'm then gonna cut it to the pieces that we need. Now of course you can leave a little bit of fat on your biltong if you like. I prefer to cut it all off personally but it is something you can make the choice. Once you've trimmed enough fat off, you can then cut it into strips. Now, I'm cutting it lengthways because I want nice long pieces. And so I want to cut it maybe around about an inch wide. So take a very sharp knife. With this piece, I'm going to support the side and cut around about here. All right, the next step is the brining process or getting the initial cure done. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna lay out all my salt or a nice salt bed on this board, lay the meat down and then lay more salt over the top so the meat is completely covered in salt. Just going to work that salt in to the meat as best I can, making sure that as much of the meat is covered in salt as possible. Okay, now we're going to leave this to sit for around two hours. That's going to draw out a lot of the moisture and then we're going to rinse this off and then put it in a vinegar bath, which is gonna sit in the fridge for 24 hours. Okay, it's been about two, maybe two and a half hours since I put the salt on there, and you can see there's quite a lot of liquid that's been drawn out. The meat itself is getting quite firm compared to, uh, to when I started as well, which is a good sign. So the next step is to wash off all of this salt, um, clean my workspace, and then we're gonna give this a vinegar bath for 24 hours. Okay, now the meat is washed off, so all that salt is gone. We're just gonna get it in this bowl here, and we're going to basically fill it up with vinegar. Now you can use brown vinegar or malt vinegar. White vinegar is fine. I've tried it with brown vinegar or malt vinegar, this is otherwise known as, and uh, I'm not a huge fan of the flavor of that, and you do get a little bit of the vinegar flavor in the meat if you don't do a strong, flavoring 
And so for this batch, I'm just using white vinegar. So we want to make sure that all the meat is covered. And this is uh, antibacterial as well. So it's an important step. This is going to help prevent any mold from growing on the meat while it's going through the drying process. Some may still form, so you've just got to keep an eye on it as we go. And if any mold does form, you can actually take a uh, piece of paper towel or cloth, soak it in vinegar and actually dab that mold off. But hopefully that won't happen since we're giving this a really good soak in this vinegar. Okay, so I'm going to pop this in the fridge and I'll be back in 24 hours. All right, this has been soaking for 24 hours now. So we're gonna take this out, we're going to pat them dry, and then we're gonna season them and get them ready to hang into the box themselves. Now, just like beef jerky, when it comes to flavoring and seasoning your biltong, there's an almost unlimited amount of different options that you can choose. And the great thing about making your own is that you get to essentially try things out yourself. Now, one of my favorite jerky recipes involves brown sugar, lemongrass, and curry. And I'm going to experiment by making one of those strips out of these flavors and then we're also going to do a more traditional spice mix. I'm just going to start off with a little bit of brown sugar, some curry powder, and the lemongrass. Okay, that's pretty good. Next, I'm gonna go with something a little bit more traditional, which is going to be essentially three different ingredients. Some coriander seeds, some black pepper, and just some chili flakes. Not a lot, just a little bit for flavor and just a tiny bit of heat. The first step is to toast the coriander seeds in a dry pan. Toasting these will help release the oils to increase the flavor intensity essentially. All right, I can really smell the aroma coming off of those now, so they're nicely toasted. So we can pop those in the mortar and pestle and grind them up along with the other spices. Now also into this mix, we're gonna throw some salt as well. Now the first one I'm gonna prepare is the experimental one, which is the lemongrass and curry. So I'm going to get this one out of the way first and then I've got a little idea for the next one. So essentially I'm just going to spoon this on, give it half the mixture on one side. I'm just going to work this in. There's probably enough to do a little bit more than this one here, so I'm going to remove the excess because we don't want to have it too thick on there. Still want the meat to dry out. And of course this will dry out as well. 
it looks nicely coated. I'm actually going to try and coat that small piece with this as well. Now again, this is a, an experiment. Uh, I've not used a wet rub on Biltong before. This could be a complete disaster, but we'll find out in five days or so. Uh, but that's the point of this whole thing, is experimenting and trying it at home. So I know this seasoning works very well with jerky. In fact, I've got a uh, making kangaroo jerky. I think I did the same sort of recipe in that, or very something very similar. Uh, again, if you'd like to see that, I'll pop a uh, link up in the top corner there or in the description as well. Have a look at that and uh, tell me what you think. And now of course we're ready for the more traditional dry rub. Just making sure we get all sides. There's the biltong box. So we're going to hang the meat in here for around five days or so. Again, if you want to see the video on how I made this, I'm going to throw the card up in the corner again, or you can click the link in the description. Just to give you an overview though, it is just a simple box, nothing too special about it. It does have a few key features though. One, you can see there's some vent holes at the bottom and at the top. They've been screened off to prevent critters from getting inside. You've got two racks here that we can hang the meat from. That's what those hooks are going to do, hang from there. And it does have a very low wattage bulb in there. Again, this bulb here is not there to create heat to dry the meat out. It's simply there to help reduce the humidity and also create a bit of an airflow as well. There you go, that's some well hung meat. We're gonna leave this for probably around five to seven days for this thickness of meat. And we're just gonna check on it daily. Okay, this has been five days now. Didn't see a lot of change in the initial period. It wasn't until actually day four uh, that it had a pretty significant change, uh, which is a little bit unusual, but it might be this cut of meat. Now, what we're looking for is a nice color change so you can see that the meat is quite dark now there's absolutely no mold growing on them so the salt and vinegar brine and cure at the beginning has done its job nicely and what we're also looking for is a nice firm feeling but still has a little bit of give so you can see that i am still be able to depress this meat but it is quite firm compared to raw meat. So this is all looking pretty good. Hopefully when we cut inside, it'll look even better. Okay, now it's on the bench. We can get a much better look at uh, how this has turned out. Again, just to reinforce the darkness of that color, which is quite good. And as I was saying, there's still some give in the meat. Now, some people like to have these still with a little bit of color in the middle. I prefer it to be a fairly consistent color throughout. And uh, let's just get one of these cut open so we can have a look. Now I'm cutting across. I'm just using a serrated knife because it can be quite firm. You can also use a deli slicer if you're fortunate enough to have one of those.
So a nice consistent colour. Still some give, that's perfect in my eyes. Again, just to really reiterate that the consistency of it is really down to personal preference. That worked out really well. The lemongrass and curry is relatively subtle, but it's definitely quite different to the uh, the original. Baking biltong is a very simple and easy way to preserve meats for a healthy snack. I really hope you enjoyed this video. To all my existing subscribers, thank you very much for all your continued support. And until next time, take it easy.